Hi there, welcome to BioWorld. Today I'm going to open another page of my enzyme uh, photo album. And this time I'm going to introduce four new scientists. Firstly, we have uh, Leonor Michelis and Maud Menton, who are both responsible for the Michelis Menton curve and Michelis Menton equation that they introduced in the year 1913. And then 20 years later, we have Hans Leinweaver and Dean Burke, who modified Michelis Menten's curve to form what we will learn as the Leinweaver Burke plot. Now, you may be wondering why are we talking about curves and plots when this is not a mathematics topic? This is, after all, biology. But as usual, if we are talking about this, this has to be because of our SDPM syllabus. So, come, let's have a look at the syllabus. Now, the STPM Semester 1 syllabus for Chapter 4, Subtopic 4.2, concerning the mechanism of action and kinetics, requires us to be able to deduce the michelis menten constant called Km. And we are supposed to deduce this from the michelis menten curve as well as the line weaver plot. After which, we must know the importance or significance of the Km and Vm values. But before I can introduce the michelis menten curve and the line weaver -Berg plot, we have to sort of reverse a little bit to what is known as the time cost graph. A time cost graph is a graph that we will plot when we study the enzyme catalyzed reactions. Let me explain more. In an enzymatic reaction, we have a substrate that will be converted by the enzyme into a product. To monitor the reaction, we can either measure the decrease in substrate or we can monitor the increase in product. So based on that data, we can then plot a graph where the y-axis is concentration against the x-axis, that is time. So if we are monitoring the decrease in substrate, we will get a downward curve or if we are monitoring the increase in product, we will get an upward curve. We can modify this time cost reaction curve into a rate of reaction curve. That is, we can uh, measure the increase in product, let's say, every minute. So then we will get a graph that shows the rate of reaction increasing over time but eventually reaching a plateau. Now, based on this graph, Michelis Menten decided to reorganize the axis whereby the x axis was replaced with substrate concentration. So, when they measure based on the increase in substrate, they find that the curve for rate of reaction follows the same pattern of increasing and eventually becoming constant. So this is how the michelis menten curve came about. Now we know what is a michelis menten curve. It is a curve at which the x-axis is substrate concentration and the y-axis is rate of reaction. So next, let's find out how to determine Vm and Km values. We start first with the Vmax value. To determine Vmax, we have to look at the constant part of the curve. So we draw a line and the value of the rate of reaction here is considered the maximum rate of reaction, symbolized by Vmax or Vm for short. Next, if we want to determine the Km value, we have to determine half of Vmax. That means, for example, let's say Vmax is 10. So half of Vmax would be 5. So at the point of 5, we draw another line. So this line is for the rate of reaction that reaches half of the maximum rate of reaction. Then we see the intersect between the curve and the line for half of Vmax. We extrapolate downwards 
to determine the substrate concentration. That substrate concentration is called Km, also known as the michelis menten constant. So Km is the substrate concentration at which the rate of the enzymatic reaction reaches half of the maximum rate of reaction. Now, why is this important to know? Well, you see, this value is a constant for a specific enzyme and substrate, meaning that each enzyme will have a specific value towards the substrate that it is attracted to. Let me explain further. As I mentioned earlier, Km values are constant to specific enzyme and substrates. So these values actually help us determine the affinity of an enzyme to its substrate. Affinity meaning like the power of attraction between the enzyme and its substrate. Now, a smaller Km value is good because then it tells us that the enzyme has a very high affinity to the substrate. Uh, that means it is like very attracted to the substrate. So for the enzyme to work efficiently, it just needs a little bit of substrate. In contrast, higher Km values are not so good because this tells us that the enzyme is not so attracted to the substrate. And if we want the enzyme to work efficiently, we need a high concentration of substrate. Now, if this is still confusing, let me try to explain more. Now, let me use the michelis menten curve to try and explain the significance of Km values. Now, in this curve, let's say the Km value is 2. So what this means is that for my enzyme to work efficiently, I will have to provide around 2 millimoles of substrate. And the enzyme will be able to carry out the reaction. Now, if you've watched my video on enzyme models, you will come to know that a scientist by the name of Koshlin has suggested that enzymes are not substrate specific. Instead, they are group specific. So this means that my enzyme here can bind to other substrates. For example, this blue substrate. So let's say I carry out an experiment involving my red enzyme and my blue substrate. I collect data and draw a michelis menten curve, like so. So using michelis menten's technique, I can determine the Km value of my enzyme and blue substrate. So let's say the Km value here is 4. So what this means is, to make my enzyme work efficiently, I will have to provide my enzyme with 4 millimoles of the blue substrate, after which the enzyme will have affinity towards this substrate and carry out the enzymatic reaction. So you can see, in our body, there are many different substrates present. So for the enzyme to decide which biochemical reaction to carry out first, the Km value comes in useful. So whenever the Km value is smaller, that reaction will occur first. So you can see why Km values are so important. But the problem with the michelis menten curve is that when we draw curves, the individual who is plotting the curve may draw it differently, meaning that the Km values that we get may appear different. So this was the problem that line Weaverberg had with the michelis menten curve. Now, how did they solve this problem? Let's find out. The first thing that Line Weaverberg did was modify the Michelis Menten equation. Yes, this equation does look like mathematics, but fortunately in biology, this equation is provided. 
but no harm if you choose to memorize it. So how they modified the equation is by inversing the equation. So V0, which is the rate of reaction at a given time, becomes 1 over V0. Then Km plus the substrate concentration, which is the denominator, becomes the numerator. And maximum rate of reaction multiplied with substrate concentration now becomes the denominator. Then they choose to rearrange this equation so that it becomes 1 over V0 equals to Km over Vm multiplied with substrate concentration plus substrate concentration divided with Vm multiplied with substrate concentration. So from this equation, they then reorganize it to make it similar to a linear equation that is y equals to mx plus c. So they rearrange so that y is 1 over v0, mx, m is km over vm, x is 1 over s, and then c is 1 over vm because we will cancel the s off. So once you have a linear equation, they can then draw a linear graph. Come, let's see. Now for a line weaver bird plot, if we relook the formula derived by line weaver bird, the y-axis will be 1 over v0, that is 1 over rate of reaction, and the x-axis will be 1 over s, that is 1 over substrate concentration. So when we get a straight line, we have two intersects. The intersect at the y-axis will be 1 over Vm, whereas the intersect at the x-axis will be negative 1 over Km. So if we relook the story of our enzyme and yellow substrate, from the michelis menten curve, we can directly get the Km value at 2. But if we are looking at a line weaver bird plot, the intersect at the x-axis will give us a value of negative 0.5. So if like in an objective or structure question, they give you a line weaver bird plot and ask you to determine Km values, please remember not to directly give the answer as negative 0.5, but because the intersect is negative 1 over Km, you have to calculate to get Km equals to 2. Let's take my blue substrate example. So now, if the Km value in the michelis menten was 4, then the intersect in my line weaver bird plot will definitely not be 4. Instead, it will be negative 0.25 because the intersect is negative 1 over Km. So it will be a point here. The Km value, of course, remains the same, but the Km value will be inwards here at negative 0.25. And you see, you only need two points at which you can already get a straight line. So that is why the line weaver bird plot is more accurate than the Michelis Menten curve. For a plot with two lines, every student will get the same line. But with the michelis menten curve, no matter how many points you have, every student may have a different curve. So that is why the line weaver bird plot is more accurate in giving us values for Km and Vm. Let me now make a conclusion. Let's differentiate between the michelis menten curve and the line weaver bird plot. In the michelis menten curve, the y-axis is rate of reaction and the x-axis is substrate concentration, whereas for the line weaver bird plot, which is a linear line, the y-axis is 1 over rate of reaction and the x-axis is 1 over substrate concentration. So because of the difference in their graphs, their formulas are different too. michelis mentens formula is V0 equals to Vm multiplied with substrate concentration, divided with Km plus substrate concentration, whereas the line weaver bird formula 
follows the y equals to mx plus c formula that is 1 over v0 equals to km over vm multiplied with 1 over substrate plus 1 over vm. Regardless of whether we use a michelis menten curve or a line weaver plot, we are still able to derive both km and vm values. Only thing, michelis menten you can directly get the km value, whereby a smaller km value is better. But in a line weaver plot, we actually have to do a bit of calculation because the intersect at x actually is negative 1 over km. So a higher negative 1 over km value is similar to a lower km value in which it means that the enzyme has a higher affinity to the substrate. So remember... If we are talking about a michelis menten curve, smaller KM values are better. But if we are talking about a line weaver plot, the bigger the negative 1 over KM value, the better. So with that, I conclude my discussion on the michelis menten curve and the line weaver plot plus VM and KM values. These values become far more important when I discuss inhibitors with you. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.